So welcome back to part two of my walk in Old Town Park. I'm just enjoying the peace and quiet, listening to a few birds singing and the sound of the river just bubbling by. But what I want to look at now is some of these old trees such as this oak here. Up in that canopy there, there are one or two bits of dead wood, dead branches decay holes that you occasionally find in the tree which we looked at before they make perfect nesting and roosting opportunities. Another thing about dead wood and there's a chunk of an old branch down there is that it's such an essential part of the whole woodland ecosystem that you have this supply of decaying wood on the floor sometimes up in the trees but this is where the beetles, the microfauna the fungus, it all starts the life of the woodland so th this whole cycle is very very important so woodlands are very much full of life but this bit of decay is an essential part because it supports all that life. So when you see bits of dead tree such as up there it's all part of the natural process of the woodland. And so there's a lot of old stuff here in this wood and a lot of it is actually where our ancestors have been busy doing something or other and there's a nice uh, sign of that just down here so following this little stream here which runs down the hill there into that very deep old wheel pit down there and this is the sign of an old mineral processing industry. It's a bit treacherous at the moment but there is the actual adit or the mine entrance a bit further up so we'll go and have a look at that now. So down there that's where the mine entrance was. in there safely gated off with a little sign on it so don't go in there but it's one of those things where humans have almost by accident created an excellent habitat so these caves these old mines are perfect places for bats to roost over the winter and I believe it's a good place for the greater horseshoe bat too and that's one of the more unusual ones that there are colonies around various parts of Devon and um, it would be nice to think that there are some in there but we can prove that by setting up a sound recorder a bat detector sound recorder so that's something that I'd like to do at some point but let's go back to this dying tree here so look talking of good habitat so if you can see that sort of bulbous yellow fungus growing on there that's one called chicken of the woods sulfurous yellow and at other points on that bit of old dead wood there lots of holes in the tree lots of places for the dormice, for the birds, for the bats and then up there clump of ivy, perfect nesting sort of opportunity there. So nature is an untidy thing and this whole cycle of decay is a big part of it. So looking around at these oak trees, this species of oak or the, the two native British species of oak can host thousands and thousands of other species. So right from the top of the canopy 
we're looking at small invertebrates and the little bugs and the butterflies the birds that feed on them and these stems, these trunks, they're covered with moss, they're covered with lichen, ivy there's some fern growing up there, it's all a bit dry at the moment but when the rain comes the inevitable Dartmoor rain will refresh all of that and it will green up again so the oak tree really is one of the big sources of life in these woodlands one of the places I like to have a quick look is down here so in amongst the root buttresses there if you go in there the perfect place for small mammals to shelter I do like to have a little look in there and see what's been in there so you'll often find traces of where these um, wood mice or bank voles may have been hanging out you'll find bits of chewed up acorns and bits of partly built nests it all tells that story how important these oak trees are so as I mentioned before these dormouse boxes it's a licensed activity to disturb these so can I just remind you if you're watching this please don't disturb them but there are many other things that we find in these nest boxes particularly in the springtime and if you can hear up in the tree there's a very annoyed blue tit that's shouting at me so I'll be really really quick and that's why that's why the blue tits annoyed with me so I'm going to put the lid back on and walk away and another nest box here with another angry blue tit up in the tree but again I'll just show you very very briefly what's in there so these little chicks are getting their feathers on beautifully now, they're almost ready to fledge so that parent bird will be calling them out of the nest in the next couple of days and off they go and there are lots and lots of other creatures that we find in these nest boxes so I'll put some of those photos up and um, you can see what we actually get to witness in these woods So this magnificent oak tree here these beautiful sp spreading limbs they're just magnificent and again full of life and again there are bits of dead wood in amongst there but This tree is what you might consider to be the mother of the woods in the long time that she's been standing there, a few hundred years probably. She's dropped hundreds and hundreds of acorns and the next generations are down here. Tiny little oak trees just waiting for their turn to become 
hopefully the mother of the woods in replacement of her. There's also other little trees and shrubs underneath, so this one here is a little hazel. And then we've got all the ancient wood and wild flowers which I mentioned in the previous video. See, uh, there's a little movement up there, there's a little chaffinch just going out of sight at the moment. A little female chaffinch just looking for morsels of food. Again, one of the numerous creatures, numerous species that relies on this oak tree. So I've talked about this succession of woodland wildflowers through the season and finally I've found what I'm looking for. In the last video I mentioned one of the, the plants, one of the flowers that makes up this wonderful woodland carpet here is the cow wheat. And the first flowering one in this wood that I could find is here. So this lovely little yellow flower there is the cow wheat and it's this slender little plant with these leaves in an opposite arrangement like that all part of this diverse wonderful woodland that we have here That little beauty there is a bank vole. And when we lift up this sheet, we often find little, see her in the run there? I'll put this down so she can go back in. But that run, and it looks like there's another little nest in there too. So that's typical of a bank vole to have a little burrow like that. So if you see sheets of rusty old metal like this, Again, there's often a, a good habitat in there. So just across the road from the wood is this lovely bit of habitat just here. So this is in fact a triple SI, a site of special scientific interest because of its it's wetland habitat and some interesting invertebrates and plants you can be found in here not perhaps at this time of year but unfortunately if you take a closer look at this environment it's very much like the little wet flush back in the woods and you've got a lot of encroachment going on here with the birch and the willow so at some point we'll have to try and get in here because you want a bit less of these woody plants and a bit more of this wet grassland. And as I mentioned before, it's really because of human activity and we've fenced off areas like this and they're no longer really grazed. It's quite interesting that some people call the, the woodland the, the climax of ecological development. So it sounds all very exciting. So if you leave any patch of land really untouched but fenced in, it will eventually turn into the woodland. So that's the, the, the climax habitat. But oh, we just caught a little brimstone butterfly flying around there. Don't know if you can see that. 
So this unfortunately will become woodland but we again have to take on that role of being grazers and take out all this sort of new growth of woody plants to preserve this open space and this diversity. There's still a lot here though that we can have a look around at. So just having a bit of a closer look at the habitat itself these grassy tussocks you can see are become, becoming dominant and this is where the grazing needs to play a part because what we really want to see here is more of this moss this kind of sphagnum bog moss which will slowly disappear underneath all this tussocky millennia grass So this is quite good, I've just spotted a, a keeled skimmer oh, and it just keeps flying away from me. Sadly I've not got my zoom lens with me today. I'll try and get a bit closer to it. So that's one of the speciality species of this grassland, this wetland, so I'll just see if I can get a picture of it. So there is the keeled skimmer, a species of dragonfly, which is really quite unusual. But this patch of grassland, as you can see, is a host for that species. And a good reason why we need to protect it. And then walking a bit further I find a, a red dra uh, dragonfly, it's a damselfly. Is it possible to see that? It's quite small. And that's the large red damselfly. Not particularly large but beautiful shining there in the sun. Here we have another species of the wet grassland. common frog, it's quite a small one. So there we have it. In about half an hour I found some really interesting species around and about in this wet flush so it really needs to be well cared for. And I hope that some of us can get round to doing some of this vegetation management at some point. So that's the end of my walk and talk. So thank you for listening. And I hope you enjoy the wonderful wildlife around here. <laughs>